The central Otago landscape is known as the arid heart of Aotearoa because of its dry and extreme climate. All around it looks like the land is burnt and empty of life. But if you look closer, and I mean a lot closer, you'll see that this craterscape is actually bursting with native plant life. The amazing thing about this area is it's only 27 hectares, but there's an incredible concentration of species that are threatened nationally. So there's about 40 native plant species here. At least a dozen of those are found nowhere else or in just one or two other localities. Why is it that the plants out here are all so small? Well, you've got to realise, Nick, this is a really tough place for plants to live. This is a drought-prone area, and, and these plants are all living on really well-drained gravel. So to live here, you've got to be tolerant of really, really dry conditions, and windy conditions as well. And that's part of the reason why a lot of the plants have developed a cushion-type habit, so they're low, close to the ground, out of the wind. So this is a really tight cushion one. Over here, we've got a looser type of rhyolia, okay, where it's not forming such a dense mat. And over here, we've got another cushion plant, which is a type of forget-me-not. And this mound will be covered in a mass of yellow flowers, and it's really, really spectacular. This is a type of lichen, and it's, it's a really good indicative plant of the dryland uh, eastern South Island. It's a free-flowing form, if you like. It's kind of New Zealand's version of a, of a tumbleweed. And this lichen just simply rolls around on the ground. So and, it doesn't uh, have any roots? No roots at all. And this is a cress, closely related to broccoli and, and cabbage. Not only is Central Otago a special place for a whole myriad of plant communities in this seemingly barren landscape, but it's also home to one of New Zealand's most endangered animals, the chafer beetle. This chafer beetle is only found here in the whole world, and it's got a whole reserve just to itself. All around the world these chafer beetles fly, but in New Zealand all the rules break down, and here we have flightless chafers. Here's one here, so they don't move much in the daytime, but by night time, you know, the, the sand dunes will be alive with them. We have a monitoring program where once a year on National Chafer Day, all the dock staff from Alexandra and also egg research staff from Invermay, we come here and we take 186 samples and usually get between two and 18 beetles. It's hard work. It's very hard work. We've done some trials putting larvae in with different types of plants. What we've found is that they, unlike what we thought, we thought they'd like silver tussock and some native cushion plants that are here. We're finding they do really well on an introduced grass called sweet vernal. We're also using those larvae to try and establish a captive population at Invermay. And, and there we've been feeding them carrot and finding that they're doing really, really well on carrot. It may not look like your average nature reserve or native forest, but trust me, this bone dry landscape is simply covered in some of our most special and fascinating native wildlife. All of this right under our very noses.